stand as you are able and let us sing our opening hymn number 365 seated. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eve's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your re reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you. Through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is the water of life. Alleluia.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <clears throat> In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast a victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and Wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation blessing and honor glory and might god and the lamb forever amen this is the feast of victory for our god for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will now have the reading of the lessons. The first, le first reading is from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing. All who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him, we are witnesses to all that he did. 
both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on the tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testified about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please read, read with me what's written in a bold type. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of and the Lord acts valiantly. The, the right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live, and hear the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that builders rejected has become the chief cornerstones. By the Lord has this been done. It is marley of our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading comes from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, 1 to 11. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters of the good news, that I proclaim to you which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly in the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain, for I hand it on to you as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are all still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then he all the other apostles, I last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am in the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I work harder than any of them, Though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me, whether it was I or they who proclaim. And so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ our Paschal Lamb has been sacrificed. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, 
had been already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. For he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The gospel of the Lord praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> Grace to you and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord is risen. Alleluia. Let's try that one more time. The Lord is risen. Alleluia. And it's the Trinity, so we do it three times, right? The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The tomb is empty. The tomb is empty. And the women fled. And they told no one, for they were afraid. That is the Gospel of Mark's Easter sermon. The tomb is empty, and the women were afraid. And they told no one. There is no encounter with the resurrected Jesus. There is instead a mysterious stranger who issues a promise and a command. The promise, Jesus has been raised. He is not here. See, this is where they laid him. And a command. Go tell Peter and the disciples, he, Jesus, is going ahead of you to Galilee. It is there that you will see him. Remember, remember that this is what Jesus told you. Now each of the Gospels has at least two pieces of evidence as proof that Jesus has risen from the dead. The empty tomb and the appearances of the risen Christ to multiple followers. In Mark, there is an empty tomb. Apart from the messenger, but no one in Mark's gospel gets to see Jesus or touch the nail holes in his hand. There is no great commission as in Matthew, no recounting of the Hebrew scriptures or a meal shared with travelers on the way to Emmaus as in Luke. There is no personal conversation with Mary in the garden, nor the sudden arrival of the risen Christ behind doors, as in John. Look it up. The original ending of Mark is verse 8. The women fled. Now, if you look at it, there's two other endings, and it's probably because somebody said, well, we have to tell more than that. But Mark leaves us at the empty tomb. He is risen. Go to Galilee. He has gone ahead of you. We talked about this quite a bit at the book study. What? But I thought it was all there. No. Mark leaves us at the empty tomb. Mark's good news, apparently, his good news requires no resurrection proofs. No encounters based between Jesus, no encounters between Jesus and his disciples. It is a promise that the messenger issues. A promise. He is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The end leaves us asking, will the disciples trust the promise? Will they trust the promise that Jesus has gone ahead of them? And that is our question for ourselves. 
Will we trust the promise that Jesus has gone ahead of us? Countless times in the scriptures, Jesus predicted that he would be raised after being crucified. But the idea is so incredible, so foreign, that those closest to him are unable to even comprehend it. Where are his followers and his closest friends on this morning when the sun rises? Nowhere to be found. But it is the women, it is the, whim, it, it is the women it, it, who come to the tomb expecting to carry out their duties to care for the decomposing body of their teacher, their friend. They come with spices to anoint his body in the way that was traditional. One last act of love for their teacher. And their question is, who will roll away the stone? Instead, when they get to the tomb and they looked up, the stone is rolled away. And there is a messenger in that tomb dressed in white, an angel. And we've talked many times about seeing an angel is pretty terrifying, right? There is an angel sitting there on the right side, a symbol of a place of honor. To say that these women is alarmed is an understatement, right? The tomb is empty. And there's an angel. Our teacher is gone. Where do we begin to tell the story? What to think about all this in their grief, their sadness. They are perplexed. They are overwhelmed with this sense of surprise. The idea that a person could raise from the dead is just unbelievable. They flee, they are afraid. An angel in an empty tomb. How can this empty tomb be, how can this empty tomb be good news? but they have a promise, a promise. He is going ahead of you. He is going ahead of you. And it is in that promise that there is such great news. Now Mark is a good storyteller. There is no birth story and there are no resurrection appearances. But he leaves us with this promise. This promise, Jesus is going ahead of you. Think about it. Jesus is going ahead of you. If this is true, then death has been stripped of its power. He has risen and is going ahead of us, ahead of you. He is going ahead, and there is no place, no place, that Jesus' followers can go that Jesus isn't already there. He has gone ahead of you. And in that is the good news. There is no place you can go that Jesus isn't ahead of you. From the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he invites his followers, the disciples, one by one, to follow me. And it is the proper place for a disciple to follow their teacher. They follow behind Jesus. They follow after Jesus. They have seen many, many things. Miracles. Miracles. The lame walk the sightless sea, healings that are phenomenal. And they have heard teachings that have opened them to the possibilities of what God's love is about. 
Jesus is ahead of us. Jesus is ahead of us even when we don't see him. The women didn't see Jesus, but they were promised that Jesus was still there. If Jesus has gone ahead of us in death, is there any doubt that Jesus will be ahead of us no matter where life may take us? Jesus is always ahead of us, going places where we are going. The messenger promises the women they will see Jesus in Galilee, where they experience life, a fullness of life with Jesus as he walked around the countryside, visiting the villages and towns. They experienced life, and they are promised that Jesus is going back to where all this began. The interesting thing about Bark's way of telling this story is that we come to the end, and we know the women told somebody sometime, right? Or nobody would ever have known that Jesus rose from the dead. It just took them a little while, a little while to comprehend. And they told the disciples, and they traveled to Galilee. The beginning of Jesus' ministry was in Galilee. Go to Galilee, the messenger says, away from the tomb. Go away from the tomb where it is a place of death and endings. Return to Galilee. Return to life and a new beginning. That is the interesting way in which Mark tells the story of the good news. We come to the end, the tomb is empty, and we have to go back to the beginning and read the story again. The life-giving story of Jesus Christ, the risen one, the Son of God. I have read through Mark as a minister now, I think this is the fourth time. And each time I read through, I realize what a wonderful storyteller Mark is. The tomb is empty and we go back to the beginning and we read through all these stories. God's son. And each time I read through that, I see something new. And as a Bible study, wouldn't you say we learned some new things? We went back to the beginning of the ministry. We heard the words again. Our life is different. We experienced God's love through God's Son in such amazing ways. Yes, there is life in the beginning. There is no more death. For the women did tell the disciples, and the disciples did tell the world, and the world proclaims on this day, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. And this is only, only, as Mark says, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Walk through the, walk through the towns, the paths of Galilee, discovering Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. Our hymn of the day is number 366, The Strife is Over, The Battle Won.
Would you please rise, if able, and say with me the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. Uh, from God, light from light, true God from true God, not, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was his incarnate, with the Spirit, and the Virgin Mary. He became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world is come. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we praise for the body of Christ, the church, where the church is persecuted, protected, where the church is privileged, granted humility, where the church is fractured, heal it, Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Life living God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with the branches lifted in praise and the roaring waters of new life, that together we may claim Easter hope. God of grace, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations. Free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end the violence and strife. God of grace, hear our prayer. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from the living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe the new life and hope into people struggling to make, make it through each day. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for this community, the faith especially. I, we pray for Lori, Mary Lee, Dan, Ray, Elaine, Brooklyn, Larry and Lorraine, Tom, Dwayne, and for all those we name in our hearts, either aloud. And for your spirit in our midst, feed us your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for the others. God of grace, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we remember those who gave, have gone before us in death. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with a joyful courage and compassion. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrection and living Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share a sign of peace with one another, either by handshake or by a wave. You can get up and move around.